Welcome to the Wealth Matters Podcast, where investors come together to better understand how to build passive cash flow and create generational wealth without all the confusing mumbo jumbo. Here's your host and co author of Amazon number one bestseller, Alpesh Pamar. Welcome to Wealth Matters Podcast. I am going to talk to Mr. Colin today. Colin is uh, a property manager. So first time a property manager on Wealth Matters Podcast. He owns a company called Atlas Property Management. And he actually recently co-founded a construction company, Atlas Construction. So I am looking forward to this episode on how Colin moved from being an investor to self-managing the properties to, you know, managing larger properties. I was talking to him before the, we started the podcast and he and I know a lot of people um, uh, in the same industry. And I, I, I was surprised to know that he manages uh, their properties as well. So I'm looking forward to this episode. Welcome, Colin. Thank you so much for having me, Alpesh. Absolutely. Hey, Colin, so uh, let's start with some fun. Tell us something interesting or witty about yourself. Something funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> too many funny stories to tell that are too embarrassing. Uh, uh, interesting about myself. Uh, I'm pretty much uh, wholly overqualified. I feel to do what I'm doing. I've got three engineering degrees. I played college football and then I've got Ooh. a professional engineering license. So, wow. Wow. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm an engineer, I'm a software engineer and computer, so I, I can tell, you know, what we go through <laughs> to get an engineering yeah, degree. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I've wasted all that time and money to get here, but, you know, it's the path that I've been led. No, I, I think it, it works. So a lot of time, you know, we talk about, oh, you don't need to get educated and all, but, and I also say that. But if you're passionate about something, it does make sense, right? So when mm -hmm. I started my career or journey, I did not know what I want to do, but I always loved computers, right? Yeah. And that, that's what led me to what I'm here. If I did not do computer, I wouldn't have been able to migrate to US, right? That was the very first thing. I, I'm from India, migrated here about 20 years ago. I couldn't have got work here, you know? So that's what got me started. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's so true. And, you know, do I use any of those structural design things anymore? No, not really. Since my partner, Adam, that I, that I work with, he's an engineer too. We met in college, we played football together and uh, he handles all the construction stuff. So I handle all the property management stuff, but it, it's led me to where I am. And, you know, the analytical thinking, how to look exactly. at numbers and analyze stuff, that mindset is still there, even if the technical skills aren't being utilized. I agree. So how did you start with real estate? Uh, I always tell people I started with the real estate gateway drug. Uh, for me, was uh, most people is rich dad, poor dad, right? Right, that yeah, was, yeah. <laughs> Mind-blowing experience that was the paradigm shift. So it's kind of like the gateway drug is what I say. Um, so yeah, I got in that. I spent about a year um, you know, reading, researching, listening to audiobooks and podcasts and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then I had some seed money and so it was time to pull the trigger. So I bought my first property. Uh, and when was that? 2017. Oh, okay. Awesome. Wow. You jump started because I started as well. Exactly. I was driving and I was like, let me pop this city in, rich dad, poor dad, because I had read it a while ago, but never yeah. understood. And then while driving, because by the time I got into investment game, when I read it before, like 10 years ago, I was just uh -huh. a you know, workaholic. Yeah, and I was driving, and now I kept thinking. So 2015, I got started, but that's awesome. 2017. Yeah. So when you got started, what was going through your mind when you decided to self-manage your properties? <clears throat> well, uh, as I was under contract on my first property, uh, I got fired uh, from okay. my my job, and I was kind of like, I don't. And I had been thinking about exiting once I was getting some traction, some real estate. That was always the plan that just got accelerated. Um, so I was like, well, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and self-manage. So I'm on top of everything. And that's really what started the journey. Uh, my investments were here where I was located, right? They were in the town that I lived in. So it was easy for me to self-manage them. Yeah, no, that, that makes it easier. Yeah. Uh, so when you started self-managing, did you have any process in place or how, how did you grow? <laughs> no, 
no, no. So I tell everybody, I, I self-managed for a couple of years on my own properties before I started touching other people's property. So I was able to make mistakes at my own cost and not yours. Right. Uh, no, I didn't have any processes. I was, I mean, I was just hacking stuff together with QuickBooks and Excel spreadsheets and poorly, uh, might I add. Uh, and then I got introduced to property management software. Once I got up to about 40 units, that started being a necessity. And uh, so I got some PM software and at least I had that for the framework of, right. you know, tracking rent collections better and going through applications and putting leases together online and starting to implement the processes that the software had to, you know, excel that way and grow. Got it. So uh, once you started growing, what kind of system or process did you set up so you don't have to take 2 a.m. calls for toilet flooding? <laughs> uh, so first, there's not as many 2 a.m. toilet flooding calls as everybody imagines. That's exactly. Like, That's what we have been told, right? <laughs> everybody's like, oh, I don't want to get a rental property. I don't want the right. 2 a.m. calls for right. a flooded toilet. I've literally never had a 2 a.m. call. Right. Uh, you know, I've had maybe some 10 p.m. calls, but no 2 a.m. calls. Um, well, uh, as soon as I could, I, I once my staff started growing, my unit count started growing, I kind of had a maintenance coordinator come on board. And I was like, you're in charge of all maintenance calls. Okay. So that was that. And, you know, training tenants to put their maintenance requests in through the portal that the software has so they can do it all online. So we're not getting the phone calls and okay, right. there's that, you know, and um, very rarely do we have something that's truly an emergency that can't wait until the morning. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, yeah. Unless there's a fire or, you know, something else. So broken, broken pipes. And yes. And broken water, pipes. Yeah, water is yeah. the, water is the issue. So, uh, yep. So uh, another question, what uh, software do you use or did you used to use and did you switch to uh, another we software? We started with, and we currently use Buildium. Buildium. Uh, okay. We are looking to uh, make a switch uh, here soon. We're, we're kind of in that process, but um, haven't done it yet. So it's not official. Yeah, we should definitely talk because uh, my, my other business, my partner and I are working on building a new property management software. Okay. Yeah, it's it's basically uh, comparing that software to others would be like Tesla comparing to others because we are putting a lot of automated workflows. Okay. So it has a lot of AI stuff. So uh, we are Love looking it. forward to it. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely have more conversations about that yeah. then. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, another question I have, and of course, because I am based out of San Francisco Bay Area and I usually invest in, I also started with Midwest okay. and then moved on to investing in Birmingham and uh, mostly Southeast. So of course I hired a property manager, but if someone is investing in their backyard, would you recommend self-managing properties to those investors? And that why is or why not? That is a very much a case by case basis. Um, if you are an investor in Kansas City, I would say don't self manage, you need to call okay. me. But if you're outside Kansas City, <laughs> uh, it may be an option for you. So it really depends on what your goals are with the property and what you want your time commitments to be. So maybe you can self manage a fourplex, but once you get up to two fourplexes, that time burden starts to become an issue. Uh, and once you get more than four units, you also have to worry more about fair housing laws. So maybe it's good to pass that torch off to somebody else. Right. Yes. Um, generally, when we take over from owner operators, um, we see a lot of deferred maintenance. Okay. We see a lot of rents being behind. We don't have current leases and rents are under market. Okay. So if that's the result of an owner operator that's been doing it for 20 years and this is their thing, right? Maybe they've only got... Maybe they got 50 units and it's their whole livelihood, but that's the result of, of them doing it. Then even though the property manager is going to quote cost you money, you'll probably make more money in the end because even if the change in income is negated where, okay, before property manager, I was making $10,000 a month and my rents are higher now, my building's in better shape and I'm still making $10,000 a month. Well, Hey, you got all your time back that you were sinking that's into important. it. Yeah. You got your time. And then B, you don't have the exposure for fair housing discrimination. And right. then, um, you know, additionally, since everything's tighter on the property, your leases are up to date, your rents are at market rent, your deferred maintenance is caught up. If you do choose to sell it, you might be able to reap additional hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not a million dollars, depending on the size of the property. Right. right. Yeah. Because you have everything in one place, right? Everything's automated. 
Uh, yeah. if, they, if the buyer asks for T12, these, that, you have all the documents. Exactly. Right. And uh, yeah, you dropped some value uh, bombs there. So I want to reiterate, most important thing is the time because I want to make sure that I focus on the things which I'm good at. Uh, you know, yeah. I, if I love acquisition, I should be focusing on that, not talking to tenants, not trying to get, you know, rent increase and uh, create a new lease, uh, et cetera, and send it out to tenant, right? Mm -hmm. You have to figure out your worth, right? If your yeah. time is worth 200 bucks an hour, you should not be doing this, right? <laughs> 100% agree, 100% agree. Yeah. And, and the second point is the scalability, right? Bringing someone in, uh, allows you to scale uh, up your, you know, investment game, right? So mm -hmm. you can have maybe one property or maybe two property where, which you can manage. But if you really want to have 10, 20, 50 units, you got to be able to scale up. Then the only way to do that is build a team. Either you hire your own property manager or go work with someone like Colin. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely right. No, that's that's 100% true. That's true with any business is to yeah. scale, you have to delegate responsibility so you can focus on what you're best at. That's awesome. Uh, now, uh, another question, because you were an investor, uh, you were mm -hmm. self-managing, yep. and, and, and you already know how painful it is to manage property, then why did you decide to start a property management company? <laughs> <laughs> it was a very two very selfish reasons. Um, so the first was, man, I am really not enjoying all of this dealing with the tenants right now. Right. What if I could start a third party property management company that would allow me to have enough income from those other properties to get my properties managed for free? Like that was my base entry. And then I was like, well, how about I just turn this into a profitable business instead of just a break even proposition? And, you know, I, maybe I'll make some more money on this. So that was... Uh, really where we got at. And then as we started digging into the property management industry more, started researching, it started learning about it, started talking to investors. I realized there is a gap and a lack of competent professional property managers. There is a lot of good ones out there, but there's also a lot of bad ones that give the, in, uh, the industry its reputation. Uh, I, I agree. So uh, another question I have, when, uh, when did you decide to do that? Like, what was the time that you had 10 properties? That's when you decided or 10 units or was it 30 units? It was probably around 50 or 60. Oh, wow. So you were self-managing uh, up to that point and did, were you working full-time or were you just focused? No, on no. It? So I, you know, I bought that first seven-year apartment building right as I was getting fired. Oh, nice. Like, oh, so I never went back to work after that. I said, I don't care what it's going to take. I'm going to make it work where I don't have to go to work anymore, where I don't have to have a boss, where I'm not the, not the owner of the company or making my money off of real estate or fill in the blank. So from there, I, you know, started acquiring more real estate and then decided I needed some help. And then now we're here. <laughs> oh, that, that is awesome. So, has your investment criteria changed after starting a property management company? Uh, probably a little bit. Uh, you know, we always were searching for pretty decent returns. Um, we've probably just tightened up our pro formas a little bit, to be honest with you. Um, and that's probably increased the NOI that we need because we realize that our operating expenses are going to be a little higher than they than we were thinking when we were new investors. Got it. Uh, can you talk about uh, well, your best deal so far as an investor? Uh, best deals so far. Uh, yeah. So the first deal I bought was a pretty good one, actually. Um, I came to the table 25% down, 20, 25% down. He owner financed the rest on a 20 year nice. note. Two years later, I refinanced it and pulled 110% of the money I put into the deal out. That's awesome. And do you still own that property? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's yeah. cool. So that's my free property. That's a, and uh, did you have any worse deal or bad deal? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course, all of us do. So can, <laughs> can you talk about that? <laughs> yeah. So this was one of my early deals. And it's probably like the third, four, it's probably the fourth purchase I made. Um, we bought a package of 16 single family houses in one of these smaller markets. I live outside of Kansas City. Our office is in one of the suburbs, but I live out in the country. We bought in one of these small towns and 
we were new and we were naive. <laughs> and right. so we bought this package of houses. We knew there was some deferred maintenance, but we way underestimated it. We're like, you know what? We know there's going to be some unit turns and some maintenance. And we'll just pull the cash flow off to update that, update those units. And we underestimated the cost terribly. And <laughs> it's, uh, you know, units are going, we're going vacant. We didn't have the money to rehab the units and we didn't want to re-rent them in the poor condition that they were in because we didn't want to be known as slumlords because we aren't slumlords and we wanted to be professionals. So we weren't going to rent a poor property. So then we started getting higher vacancies because we weren't having the money to pour. And so right. kind of started spiraling mm. snowballing in the wrong direction. And Right. Yeah. We've been trying to close for the last seven days, but title work has been slow. Um, but we're about 18 months in the making. We're doing a refinance uh, with a large construction loan. And then my construction company is going to go and rehab 10 of these properties That's and get awesome. them back up to market. So, so we're finally like the end is in sight. If we could just close on that loan, if title work could just get their life together. <laughs> Ugh, so that that is awesome. So Moving from self-managing properties to property management, then why construction company? So a couple things. Uh, we were having to do rehab on all of our own properties anyway. And so I was already having a handful of guys that were working for me. And as I started looking at the industry and growing in the property management industry and seeing what was needed, you know, a lot of investors like myself want to buy an asset that has a value add to it. And the value add is going to come through some forced appreciation, which is either going to be increasing the financial performance uh, or um, doing rehab to get the units or property into better shape, which then increases the financial performance, right? So you're going for operational efficiency or value add through construction. And people are like, well, who's going to do this work? Do you have a contractor? And I'm like, I've run construction projects before I could, I could do this. So (laughs) that's where it started. And I was running the projects very self-admittedly, very poorly. Uh, Maybe that's why I got let go from being a project manager, right? (laughs) Colin, you're not a good project manager. We're going to have to terminate you. And it was kind of seeing the same pattern happening. I was like, man, maybe I suck at project management. And so um, I reached out to my buddy, Adam, he's got an entrepreneurial mindset as well. And I was like, Adam, here's the deal. I have a property management company. I want to do construction. We have a large funnel that is allowing us to grow our doors under management as well as doors that need to rehab. Come partner with me. You're a great project manager. You know, construction inside and out. Come with me. Let's, let's partner up and let's grow this together. And I was no, you know, I was taking an inventory myself to know, I know that I have weaknesses and I know that you know, operations in that context was one of my weaknesses, but it was one of his strengths. So I brought him in to compliment me and it's, you know, turned out best with the value proposition for the whole thing being, listen, out of state investor, I know what your goals are because I'm an investor myself. I know what your pain points are because I've had those pain points. We are a single point of contact for property management, maintenance and rehab all under one roof and we'll help get it done for you. That, that's awesome. Hey, uh, so I'm going to throw a curveball at you. I was Go looking ahead. at time and we see do have some time and we did not discuss about this, but can you share some horror, horror stories about property management? Horror yeah. stories about property. <laughs> yeah. Or, 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 you know, the tenant called you for something. <laughs> some of the weirdest oh, stories. You know, geez. Someone uh, took most, a gun out on you. <laughs> most of the horror stories are going to really... <laughs> going to revolve around the violence or, or, or drugs. Um, We have with our value add proposition and and our being able to handle operational efficiency and improve them. We have really started to cut our teeth and, and get a reputation for being guys that can turn around properties. Right. So we see a lot of this life. We have one that we're working on right now. It's a 24 unit building and we're going to go rehab all of them. And uh, one of our construction guys was upstairs and apparently one of the ladies across the hall um, was selling her services and uh, oh. a lot of, a lot of guys in and out constantly. And uh, she's like, Hey, you, uh, you want to, want to come on over and hang out for a little bit? And he's like, no, I think, I think I'm good. <laughs> uh, so we've had that, um, you know, we've had people breaking in the laundry rooms, you know, to cut them open and steal the coins. Right. One guy that wouldn't go away 
the son of one of the tenants and she's like no you can't be here anymore like if he comes on the property you're getting evicted because he's doing drugs and so then he breaks back into the building we've got a camera we had to install right. cameras in this but we've got camera camera in the laundry room he like moves in a mattress and all this stuff which we have no idea where he got then starts smoking meth in the laundry room and we're oh. saying, what what do you do like oh. how hello police yeah that guy you know his name he's back again right uh we've had tenants assault other tenants and then get right. restraining orders and um we people die you right. know <laughs> so oh, it's just like yeah yeah you know it, uh, it's just we're still shocked, but I don't know why we still are with some of the stuff we see. So, <laughs> so hey, and one more question: After seeing what you have seen, right? Do you uh, do you not purchase in some of those areas or neighborhoods, right? Or when you are working with investors, do you also tell them that if it is in this neighborhood, we will not be able to manage your properties, or do you go? You know, are you okay with managing everywhere? Uh, we kind of manage everywhere at this point. Uh, you know, I'd love to say, I'd love to say no to certain areas, and um, there's certain areas that we do. Uh, some small pockets. Um, overall, though, Kansas City, uh, I don't feel is a town where if you go into this part of town, you're going to get shot. Right? Some towns, you know, yeah, big yeah. cities, you know, bigger cities, right? Like Los Angeles, Atlanta, Detroit. Yeah, like, yeah. you don't go to that part of town if you're not that from that part of town there's a few parts of Kansas city where you feel uncomfortable and maybe at night it's a little bit worse, but during the day we go through there and you know, I don't feel like we're ever going to get a knife pulled on us or get shot at. Oh, that That's great. So uh, this was awesome. Colin, let's take a quick break. And after the break, we will go through the same five questions. I ask every guest. All right. You're listening to the Wealth Matters Podcast. The Wealth Matters Podcast. For more info about what we do, check us out at wealthmatters.com. It's wealth, W-E-A-L-T-H, matters, M-A-T-R-S, dot com. Welcome back to Wealth Matters Podcast. Colin, are you ready for fire round? I was born ready. Let's do this. Let's do this. Has your, uh, no, actually, would you be changing business or investment strategy after coronavirus? Uh, no. No? No. I mean, we've, we've, we've uh, had 400% growth during coronavirus. That is great. Favorite real estate or finance or any other related book? Atlas Shrugged. <laughs> <laughs> any tool or website you recommend or you cannot live without? uh google suite we live on google drive email calendars uh that's yeah me too <laughs> besides our property management software that's what we use and this is an important question uh, any advice for beginner investors don't try to cash flow the rehabs per that story i was telling you earlier get the construction loan and bring a contractor on ahead of time to get them to estimate it for you and then add 15 percent. that's great how do you give back how do I give back? Uh, my wife and I are really involved in our church, so we help uh, lead the youth. That's great. And how can my listeners reach out to you? Uh, they can hit me up on my website, www.atlas.rentals, or they can look me up, Colin Douthit, on LinkedIn. Thank you so much, Colin. I had fun. I definitely learned a lot about property management today. Yeah, this is great, Alpesh. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the Wealth Matters podcast. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating on iTunes so others can enjoy the show too. Have a great week and happy investing.